Good morning, good evening, wherever you happen to be. Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you very much to the InterSource Commons and to Claire Dillon for inviting me to present today and share some of my experiences. We're going to be talking a little bit about open source and the enterprise. And speaking of, of uh, my experience with InterSource, I think my first project was about nine years ago for Thomson Reuters. And through a series of acquisitions, they had amassed a huge amount of, of legacy uh, technology, technology debt. And they had decided that they wanted to implement a developer-led intersource approach to standardizing and reducing that technology debt. So the, the idea essentially was to use intersource to um, have the developers work together to collaborate, to uh, standardize on a set of technologies and frameworks and libraries and databases and so on that the developers all bought into. And frankly, this was a real su a success. It was an exciting project. Uh, there was a, a lot of immediate return and I understand over time there was a, a long-term return in, in this effort, so it was well worth it. And so I came away from my first InterSource project thinking, hey, this is pretty easy. This is simple stuff. Um, let's go do some more. So my next project was in conjunction with, with Red Hat. It was a project for the US Navy. And what they were trying to do was to build the, a, a new version of um, a Navy airplane. And typically the way they do it is they go out to bid and they select a number of government contractors and those contractors each handle a piece of the plane. So one contractor might handle the control systems, one contractor would handle the airframe, one contractor would handle the weapon systems and, and so on. And after a five to seven year or longer development phase, they would all come together and they would munge this plane, essentially. They would stick this plane together, glue it together. And, and because they hadn't engaged over that, essentially over that th first five to seven years, they were using different components, different technologies, different models and methods and so on. So it took another three to four or five years to actually glue that plane together. So the Navy decided what they want to do is from day one, they wanted to use a more collaborative and transparent approach and have the contractors work together um, and at the early stages set a set of standards and you know, technology standards and, and uh, standard methods and, and processes and so on so that that integration piece on the back end would be much, much, much shorter. Let's just say didn't go quite as well as the Thomson Reuters project. And I, my lesson there was a bit humbling and saying, you know what, InterSource can actually be something that's, that's rewarding but, but very tough to implement. And then I took some of those lessons learned and over the years and applied them to other, other projects. So moving forward, for those of you who may not be familiar with, uh, with Wipro, we are one of the large global systems integrators around 9 billion in revenue and 180,000 employees. Uh, what's mostly relevant, most relevant is the fact that we, we do have one of the deepest and broadest open source practices, which includes our inner source practice uh, in the industry. And we have thousands of developers working on these, these projects today. And at any given time, we're doing dozens and dozens of different projects. But by myself, I've been in, I've been in open source for about 22 years. Uh, I did launch the very first open source strategy consulting firm way back when. Uh, and today I am the global open source practice leader for Wipro. So again, why are we, why are we talking about this? Um, why is it really important to have an organization like InterSource Commons who can help create these, sta these, these notions of standard, standard patterns and best practices? Um, well, and that's because Today, probably 75% of our clients, and, and we deal with large global enterprises, are, are trying InterSource in some way, shape, or form. Not just thinking about it, but actually have some sort of a full-blown program, a pilot program, you know, something going on around InterSource. And that is huge. A year or two years ago, it might have been half of that number. So the momentum around it is really, really strong, and I certainly don't see that um, <clears throat> going away, I see that uh, only increasing. And again, so it's important to have an organization like the InterSource Commons who can really bring uh, practitioners and domain experts together to help create this notion of best practices and standards around InterSource and help everyone else be successful 
uh, in implementing their inner source programs. All right, so why why are we doing this? Why are so many organizations actually trying trying inner source? And this is uh, what they tell us, not what the analysts say, not what we say, but what your peers out there are telling us as to why inner source is important to them. One, it's about innovation. It's about creating new ideas, imp Im improving their innovation models, increasing the pace of innovation, helping bring uh, uh, new products, services, solutions to market faster. That's one of the key, key things we hear. Um, since everyone today or most organ large organizations are operating in, in an agile model or mode, uh, but we're also hearing that specifically some clients have said we've got 400 agile teams and we've created 400 silos. I heard from another client almost the exact same words. Today we have 600 agile teams and we have 600 silos. So implementing an inner source model can help create essentially a distributed agile framework that makes agile work more efficiently and effectively across a distributed organization. Uh, we hear what uh, we, we package what we call um, a set of categories into developer centricity. So it's the notion that some organizations want to help their developers be more productive to produce better code, more secure code faster. Uh, that they want to also uh, be able to retain their best developers who want to operate in a more collaborative manner and to be able to recruit the new young developers who are coming out of university who already come with that collaborative and, and operating more of a transparent mindset. Uh, so they want to be able to support them as they bring them on board. And also critical, of course, is the fact that many organizations have a huge amount of technology debt. They're very fragmented that each of their different lines of business is essentially doing their own thing. And so by implementing InterSource, they want to create, again, that notion of collaborative development and the ability to reduce their technology debt, reduce their support and overhead costs, and be more effective and efficient. So let's talk a little bit, of, uh, a little bit about how do you get started? What's the, the best way? What are some of what we've seen from our clients that are critical? So, it starts with first understanding, and it may sound obvious, but it's not always followed. What are you trying to achieve, right? And it can be one or two or three or all of these things or more, but really getting clear on what you're trying to achieve. Are you trying to reduce costs through, through standardization? Are you trying to improve your, ide your ideation model? Uh, are you trying to Im improve your, your developer productivity? Whatever it is, get clear on that first. Then define a set of success and, uh, metrics and, and KPIs. Right? This is cl critical and frequently overlooked until the program is actually implemented. We see that frequently. Start with this earlier on so you know along this journey what you're trying to achieve, when you've achieved it, so what the key milestones are, uh, and how you know that you're getting some success. It's really important. Before actually implementing your inner source program, there's a step of, that I like to call getting to know yourself better, right? getting to know your organization. So conduct a technology assessment to start with. If one of your goals is to standardize, to reduce tech debt, you know, anything related to that, those technology goals, make sure that, that you understand what your organization actually uses. Many don't today. You know, what languages, frameworks, databases, so on that, that you're using across the organization. The level of, function, of features and functionality of each of these different technologies. Understand how much of it. You may be using 25 different databases, but on five of them, you're only using 5% of the features. It may not be the most efficient uh, uh, technology approach. So in, also engage developers in this process. In fact, hopefully you can, you can turn this over and make this a developer-driven initiative to discover really what technologies are prevalent in your organization. The second step is a cultural assessment. So how do you actually work? What are the norms? What are the best practices inside your organization? How do you develop the software today? What works? What doesn't work? Where their friction is in this process? So beginning to just define the kind of development culture inside your organization. And last is get organizational alignment early in this process. Really, really critical. Right? So typically we see there's a lot of developer enthusiasm for 
um, for implementing a their source approach. We see that there is our executives who believe in this and think that there's a real, uh, there's real value to the organization. Um, but it's really important to get executive buy-in, to get an executive sponsor. But then don't forget the other critical groups, functional, op, you know, ops, security, procurement, and HR. Get it, particularly HR, get them involved in supporting this initiative. It's going to be important, it's particularly when you address middle management. In almost every single uh, inner source engagement that I've been involved in, it's middle management who, uh, where some of that friction may exist because their role typically is for, is for predictability and stability. And when you begin to change the way you develop software, you begin to have people working across organizations, it can be, it, it can be, uh, create a lot of tension within that middle management layer. So get them involved in this process early also. And lastly, a few key tips I'd like to share with you. Uh, again, engage the right stakeholders early in this process at all levels. Start small. Be amazed how many organizations want to flip a switch essentially and implement intersource across 10, 12, 15 different development groups. We do not recommend that. Start with one or two work out the kinks, fine tune the process, and then begin to, to spread it out through the organization. Um, don't over measure. We've actually seen one client that had 18 different metrics that they were measuring their inner source uh, a model. Uh, they were using to, to measure their, the progress of their inner source model. And people were spending so much time focusing on the metrics that they weren't actually collaborating and building software. And so it was really negatively impacting them. So identify the four or five key metrics that are important and, and focus on that. Get the platform right early in the, in the process. Again, this should be a developer driven initiative because they're the ones who are going to be using this on a daily basis. You know, make sure that you have that in place, whether, you know, it's GitHub uh, or, or Jira or Slack or usually a combination of all of the above. Make sure that you have a collaboration platform in place that the developers have been instrumental in, in getting, getting in, in, uh, in place in the organization. And then be sure to tell yourself over and over as many times as needed that this is a hard process because you're going to be going through both organizational and cultural change. This is hard, but I promise you it will be worth it. Then say that to yourself as many times as you need to. And then lastly, recognize that inner source is a journey, that there is no one model that fits for everyone. So don't try and take a model that you see externally and say, we're going to implement that exact model within our company. And of course, it's going to work. Recognize it's a journey that it may take one, two, three iterations to get it right. But again, it will be worth it in the end. And thank you all for your time today.